Hi guys, I am so excited to be teaching you again. It's been way too long, way too long. So we're gonna get started right where we left off on Thursday. Um, because on Friday we took our midterm. Um, on Thursday, we had left off with James Chadwick and our foldable, and we still had the composition of the atom to complete. So the composition of the atom, you can write this by hand. You're gonna wanna have probably two different colors for color coding devices. Um, if you'd like, you can print out the guided notes that I attached um, in our instructions for today and you can cut and paste or you can just fill in the notes there. It, it doesn't matter to me, they're your resource. Um, although I would recommend doing it in the foldable. It's gonna be so easy when you have everything right there. But um, that being said, we're gonna continue. We're gonna get started. Um, the composition of the atom, part of the notes, so this part right here, is referring to everything we know for sure about the atom. So all of these other pages were showing the development of the atom. Um, the first idea we had and how that grew and grew and grew into the idea that we have today of what the atom actually um, is and what it's made of. So the atom is made of things called subatomic particles. I'm going to write that word down. Subatomic particles. So subatomic means smaller than the atom, which makes sense. An atom is going to be made of pieces smaller than itself. Um, just like any machine um, is going to be made of pieces smaller than itself. I like to think of my car. You know, my car has got an engine that's smaller than the car itself, and it's got different pieces that are smaller than the entire thing. Same thing with the atom. So we've got three different major subatomic particles that make up an atom. The first one these little black particles I've drawn around the edge of the atom, they are constantly moving. They're in constant random motion, um, swirling around the center of the atom. We call these particles electrons. Now, electrons are small, and they have a negative charge. So they are a charged subatomic particle. They swirl around the very center of the atom, and the center of the atom has a name. We call it the nucleus. Now the nucleus is composed of two subatomic particles you can see on this diagram. We've got these red particles, and then we've got these blue particles. I'm gonna to try to up here. We've got these blue particles. Now my red particles are protons. Protons are much larger than electrons in size and mass, and they also have a very opposite charge from an electron. Electrons are negative, so protons are positive which is kind of where they get their name, pro-positive. Um, they have that in common. My blue particles are the same size and same mass as my protons, but they are neutral. We call them neutrons. They don't have a charge. So the way that I could represent not having a charge is I could say they have zero charge. Now, my atom is made of these three parts. And these three parts, when you add them all together, contribute to the mass of the atom. So when you think about mass, you can think of it kind of like weight. When you step on a scale, you see a number go up because you have weight. If I were to take this coffee, of course I have coffee. If I were to take this coffee and I were to put it on a scale, I would see that it has weight. And it has weight because it has mass. It's made of particles, it's made of matter, it's made of stuff. So that stuff is gonna have a weight. Um, attributed with it. Same thing with atoms. So if I were to take an atom and put it on a balance, I'd see that it does have mass. It does have a weight because it's matter. Um, the different parts making up the atom are going to contribute different masses. So my protons and neutrons are the same size as one another. So they have the same mass. So if I wanted to know what was the mass of one proton or the mass of one neutron, it would actually be incredibly small. Like really unfathomably small, like such a small number, you can't even wrap your mind around how small it actually is. But we're gonna write the number down just to give ourselves an idea of just how tiny these things actually are. One proton or neutron has a mass of zero, oh, I wanna do this in a different color. It has a mass of 0 0.000000000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this many zeros. 0, 0, 1, 
six, seven grams. Yeah, it is that small. You probably thought I was kidding when I got to like the 12th zero and I wasn't. It is that tiny. It's not half a gram. It's not a quarter of a gram. It's not even a thousandth, a ten thousandth. It's less than a millionth, less than a billionth, less than a trillionth of a gram. Once again, unfathomable. You can't wrap your head around it. So this is kind of a mouthful of a, a number to even say, to say that number out loud would just take a long time. So if you were describing multiple protons or multiple neutrons, it would just be crazy to say these crazy long decimal numbers. Um, so chemists decided, okay, grams are not efficient for describing the mass of a proton. So let's make a new unit, a unit that allows us to say a number that's a lot easier to say. So let's say that this amount in grams is the same thing as one AMU. Now you might be wondering what the heck is an AMU? I've heard of pounds, I've heard of grams, I've heard of kilograms, I've never heard of an AMU. AMU is a unit that chemists created specifically for atoms and it stands for atomic mass unit. It is just small enough that it can describe the mass of an atom without having to use very long decimals. We use grams or even pounds or kilograms, wrap your head around that. The decimals we'd be having to say would just be incredibly long, incredibly large numbers. It'd be very difficult. So AMUs allow us to describe mass with simple terms and say that one proton is the same thing as one AMU. One neutron is the same thing as one AMU. Now, I mentioned earlier that electrons are smaller than protons. So you might be thinking, gosh, how can I get a decimal that's much smaller than this number right here? I can't really even imagine a number smaller than that. I guess I could add some more zeros on there, but how many more zeros could I add to a number that small? To put it in perspective, the mass of one electron is 0 0.000. 549 AMUs. What? That's saying that the mass of an electron is not half of an AMU. It's not a quarter of an AMU. It's not even a hundredth, not even a thousandth. It's five ten thousandths of an AMU. So it's a fraction of a fraction of a gram of an incredibly small gram at that. So an electron's mass is what we call negligible. So to put it in perspective, if I were to stand on the balance, I wouldn't worry when I say balance, like, I mean, if I were to take my weight, if I were to go and measure my weight, I wanna know how much I weigh right now. I've been eating a lot of snacks and this self isolation, social distancing thing. Um, and I'm worried that, you know, those snacks are starting to get to me. How, how much have I gained in this time? I wouldn't step on the balance and then say, oh no, I better take off my bracelet because that's gonna add some weight. When I take off my bracelet, my mass or my weight on the scale isn't gonna change all that much because this bracelet is so small compared to the rest of my weight. For an atom, this is kind of the same thing. If I were to take an atom and put it on a, a scale and take the weight of the atom, I wouldn't consider or even worry about the weight of the electrons because they're so small. I could take all the electrons off the atom, I could take its weight, and it would still be the same number because the mass of an electron is so incredibly small. So chemists will commonly say that electrons have negligible mass. Negligible, it's a hard word to spell, negligible. I always have to sound it out. The negligible mass, meaning that it's so insignificant, we don't even worry about it. We don't even consider it when we're trying to figure out what's the mass or the weight of an atom. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the volume of an atom. And I'm using this hand motion here because every time in class I talk about volume, I say, what is volume? What is volume? Someone tell me, what is volume? We always talk about how it's space, right? It's the space of this room or the space that this pencil takes up or the space that this coffee takes up. Everything takes up space, so everything has volume. Now, an atom takes up space. 
but it's kind of interesting because as I can see in this drawing that I have, obviously my atom is, is taking up space. I can see that there are edges and boundaries to the, to the atom, but it's not very clear what's all this stuff in between the electrons and the protons and the neutrons because I don't really talk about it and I didn't really draw anything there but there must be something right what's filling up the atom and when we think about it if it's not an electron if it's not a proton if it's not a neutron that's as small as we can get so if I didn't draw anything there that must mean it that nothing's actually there. All of this yellow highlighted area in the atom is just empty space. So an atom is mostly empty space. It's wild to think that the particles that make up you and me are mostly made of empty space, which means you and me are made of mostly empty space. It's just, your brain has a hard time wrapping its head around it. But when you really think about the fact that, you know, if there's nothing smaller than an electron, there's nothing smaller than a proton, and there's nothing smaller than the neutron, then whatever's in between them must be nothingness. Like when you go into outer space outside of our atmosphere, there's no air out there. There's no particles filling up that space. It's just a vacuum. Same thing here with the atom. If there's nothing in between the nucleus and the electrons, then whatever that is, is just nothingness or emptiness. So this is how we're going to describe our atoms. When we're talking about their mass, we're gonna think about the protons and the neutrons. When we're talking about their volume, we're gonna to have to consider the fact that they're made of mostly empty space. Now, onto the back side of your foldable. You're gonna to wanna to flip onto the back side and continue. Um, we're gonna talk about describing these properties with three unique terms. The first one is atomic number. We talk about atomic number by representing it with the variable Z. Atomic number is your number of protons in an atom. So I've got an example right here that I'm gonna be referring back to. Um, this atom, has three protons. There are these red particles, remember? So in the instance of this example, my atomic number of this atom is three. My mass number we represent with the variable A. My mass is talking about the mass of the atom, and we just talked about how protons and neutrons are the only thing with mass. So when I'm trying to find the mass of an atom, I'm gonna take up my number of protons, and add it to my number of neutrons. And that's gonna tell me what my overall weight is for that atom. So we've got three protons and one, two, three, four neutrons. So this atom has a mass number of seven. I don't know why it's not writing. Hold on, wait, let me try again. There we go. My three protons plus, I can do this. My three protons plus my four neutrons gets me a total of Seven, <laughs> seven for my mass number, for my mass of the atom. Now my net charge is talking about my charge of the atom. So charge is like, is something positive, is something negative, or is it neutral? We can actually be a little bit more specific about net charge. Net charge describes how, oops, I'm gonna do that in black, how the protons and neutrons balance out. Oh, I misspoke, I'm sorry. How the protons and electrons balance out. Since neutrons don't have a charge, we don't consider them when we consider net charge. It's really about those positive protons and those negative electrons. And how do those amounts balance out? So what we really need to remember is that protons are the positives and electrons are the negatives in an atom. So we've got three examples right here. We're gonna talk about, you know, how would you describe net charge of these three examples? So we're gonna look at this middle one right here. I'm gonna make a bar graph to help me describe my net charge of this atom. So I've got three electrons in this atom right here that I've got drawn. One, two, three electrons. So, that's like having three negatives because I have 
three electrons. I can even label three electrons. Means I have three negatives. Now in this atom, I also have three protons. So I could draw another bar and say that I have three positives because I have three protons. Now negative three or three negatives and three positives are gonna perfectly balance out to make a net charge of zero. For every positive I have, I have a negative. So when I add them up or when I balance them out, I have zero for my net charge. We call atoms that have a net charge of zero neutral, meaning that it has zero charge. Now, I've got an example over here on the right that looks a little bit different. First of all, I'm noticing that I only have two electrons. So I only have two negatives because I only have two negative electrons in this atom. But my protons are very much so the same. I still have three protons. So I still have three positives. But now my negatives and my positives are no longer equal. I've got more positives and less negatives. So when I take my negative two and my positive three and see how those balance out, I end up seeing that I have a net charge of positive one because I have more positives than I do negatives. We call atoms like this ions. Specifically, this is called a cation. Cations are positive because cats have paws. It's okay to laugh, it's okay. I know you're probably laughing. Get it, they're positive. So whenever we're talking about an atom, or in this case an ion, an ion that has a positive charge, we will call it a cation. So since this atom has a plus one charge, it is a cation. Now we've got our atom on the left, and I'm realizing my face is covering it, so I'm gonna move my face over there. So now we've got an atom over here on the left that looks different from what we saw in the middle and on the right. It's got four electrons, I can see. So that means I've got four negatives because I have these four electrons. But my protons, I still have three positive protons. So I still have three positives, but still, since I don't have an equal amount of positive and negative, since I've got more negatives and less positive, I'm not gonna see that this atom is neutral. I'm gonna see that there's a net charge there. When I add everything up, my negative four and my positive three, I find that I get a net charge of negative one. Now we call this also an ion because it's an atom that has a charge on it. Any atom with a charge is an ion, but the type of ion is gonna depend on what the sign is. So positive ions, we said are cations, because they are positive, because they have pause, and negative ions are called anions. I don't really have a clever trick to remember that negative is anion, um, besides, one student pointing out that anion looks a lot like the word onion, and onions make you cry. So, tears, angry tears. Oh, oh that looks like an angry cry. I didn't mean to make them look angry. But anyway, uh, since anions make you cry, and anion, or onions make you cry, and that's a sad thing or negative thing. You can use that to help you remember that anion is a negative ion. So now that we've got three examples of different atoms here and finding their net charge, we're gonna apply this to this atom that we have up here. So I can see that because I've got one, two, three protons, I have three positives. If I were making a bar chart. 
and I've got one, two, three, four negatives. So these aren't gonna balance out perfectly, so my net charge is gonna be negative one, and this is an anion because it is a negatively charged ion. Now, that's gonna wrap up our notes for today. Go ahead and move on to the next task.